All right, might as well do a quick video while I'm cleaning my rifle. This follows the kind of disastrous performance over at uh, Mid-South Regionals in Benton, Arkansas. It, disastrous performance for me. Uh, great match, great people, awesome food. Uh, I did terrible. I had probably the worst match I've ever had as far as uh, metallic silhouette goes. Just terrible. Couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with lack of practice. Uh, because I've been doing farm stuff so many days. Just not practicing as much as I should. Um, I know that I need to work on improving my stance. Uh, something someone brought up to me when they were competing against me. Saw me having such a hard time. Um, the fact that I've lost a ton of weight since I was since they've seen me last and haven't changed my actual shooting position any. So I'm going to have to work on that. And that's just a matter of making minor changes to the way I hold the rifle, hold my position, bone on bone contact, that type of thing. So today I figured I would uh, take my rifle apart and just take a look uh, because I noticed at the match I had on Saturday in Jackson, Tennessee, um, which I did a lot better. Suddenly I could shoot again. So I think a lot of it was practice, a lot of it was nerves over in Arkansas. Um, but I noticed when I was shooting, I felt a little sloppiness in the trigger. Now when you use your rifle all the time and you have your rifle and practice with your rifle every day, which I obviously had not been practicing enough, um, you should feel little changes, differences, in this case a little sloppiness in the trigger, uh, a little bit of a rattle. Went through the rest of the match, finished up, and I could feel something was wrong. So I took it apart this morning and uh, took it apart and bits and pieces fell out around the trigger. <laughs> Uh, all the bits and pieces were, were, were a, um, a broken spring, uh, a broken spring in a piece that the function of the spring is not a function that I use in that trigger anymore uh, because I changed the way it works and removed the little added extra safety. It still has a safety. I'm not removing the safety from the gun. This has two safeties, um, a regular tang safety and a trigger mounted blade safety you, you know there's uh, those famous maker guns that have that trigger blade safety I hate it um, I have something like it in my pistol it's okay I haven't removed it but for the precision necessary for metallic silhouette I hate it can't use it took it out left the spring in of course the spring was rolling around in there it looked like the spring might have broke uh, no, it definitely broke. It didn't might have broke. It definitely broke. They had the pieces over here. Those pieces were rattling around and they started interfering with the trigger. Not interfering much, but enough to cause just the smallest little piece of grittiness. Uh, and something was wrong. Yeah, I could tell something was wrong. So I got that cleaned up and polished some surfaces. And now I'm working on the bolt. So the theme and the title of this video is going to be Don't Treat Your Rim Fire Like Crap. Um, I do it. I know plenty of other people do it. We shoot rim fires. We compete with rim fires. Me, I use my rim fire on the on the farm for getting rid of uh, small rodents and things like that. And we, uh, especially if we use match style ammo, the the wax coated lead. Um, I'll put a picture in somewhere, maybe right here. Uh, of the type of ammo because we're not using the copper washed ammo in a gun that we compete with uh, so we get spoiled rotten with the uh, match type ammo uh, you never have to clean the barrel really I mean you clean it once a year when you put it away in the fall you know you can run a thousand two thousand rounds through it without ever cleaning it um, so we get complacent we get lazy we don't clean it the way we should. Um, took a pot after I cleaned up the trigger, put everything back together, which 
is real fun sometimes with little pieces of springs flying everywhere and little clips flying everywhere and trying to find it. Got my glasses on so I can find everything. Because uh, I think I'm indestructible sometimes and can see through uh, x-ray vision on some of this stuff. But I'm getting old. I need my glasses. Um, other thing I've noticed is that the uh, chamber area and the bolt face, dirty as heck. Um, I'm guessing that my favorite ammo that I use for this gun, uh, the batch that I have, is a sooty batch. Why? I don't know. I'm not usually have don't usually have a problem with soot, but I mean I, I had some built up stuff that had to be, you know, scraped out. Uh, and when we use the rim fires, we play with the rim fires, we plink with the rim fires, uh, we compete with the rim fires. We treat them like garbage, and we probably shouldn't because they're not indestructible. Um, and you got to think to yourself, you know, uh, would I let my AR-15 get this dirty? No. And would I let anything else get this dirty? No, not if I'm going to rely on it and going to use it all the time. So I think that had a lot to do with a poor performance. That and my general lack of practice. I know, I'm the one who always says in my videos, practice, practice, practice. Well, i got to actually do it myself, too. Uh, so getting everything cleaned up, get everything put back together. Um, you know, I have to break out the, the old-school, heavy-duty solvent. You know, the stuff that all the knowledgeable gun people say, Oh, we don't use that crap anymore. Well, you know, sometimes you got to bring out the harsh solvent and really clean stuff. Uh, a gun is a very... any gun. doesn't matter the manufacturer the type, the style. All guns are precision instruments. They have to run a certain way. Uh, the surfaces have to be polished and cleaned. The SEA surfaces and things that have to be perfect have to be perfect. Uh, so I lightened up the trigger a little, really oiled everything down. Next I'm actually going to clean the bore. God forbid he's gonna clean the bore. Ah, it's a rim fire and he's using wax coated ammo and he's gonna clean the bore. Yes, I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm making a big deal out of it because some people will freak out about uh, when they talk about cleaning the bore on a match type rifle. Now remember, this is an off the shelf rifle. This is not a fancy uh, German, fancy Czechoslovakian, uh, you know, super expensive match rifle. This is an off the shelf Ruger. Um, it's what I like, it's what I use. It wasn't super expensive. It shoots very well compared to me it, it it outshoots my ability so what the heck you know it's more accurate than i am plain and simple so basically don't treat your light rifle like crap <laughs> treat your rifle well and hopefully it will treat you well uh after i actually go through and clean the bore on this uh, i will probably have to run Typically, I run 30 rounds of ammo through it, the wax-coated lead. Um, and that's the only thing I run in this. doesn't matter what I'm shooting at. doesn't matter if I'm shooting at targets or rats. I'm going to always run the target-type ammo. I also don't use super expensive ammo in this, but that's another video. Um, but I only run that. I don't run the copper wash through this. The copper wash can go through the other rifles. Uh, it doesn't go through this one because this is the rifle I, I actually use to silhouette. Um, and any other match rimfire shooting, I just use this one. Um, so after I clean it, clean the bore, clean all the whatever might be in there for fouling out, uh, I will have to run through that clean barrel probably 30 rounds. You know, I'll do them in batches of five. I'll do them on a practice sheet. Uh, maybe I can do a video on that too. Uh, until I get back down, my groups will be bigger for the first five, smaller for the second five, and they will get down into a small, you know, the small group that this rifle will do. Uh, because I'm going to run 30 rounds through it, I'll probably run 15 through it at 50 yards and 15 through it at 100 yards. So I have a comparison between my 100 yard and my 50 yard groups. Uh, that's just a good thing to keep on file, keep on track. Um, you always end up with file piles of all your targets. I probably have 90% of every tar paper target I've ever shot at just because I keep files on the date, weather, ammo. Um, the more 
data points you have, the more you're going to know, um, especially if you're doing batch of ammo. Like I use a particular brand style uh, weight of bullet. Um, if I know my group on that starts to open up, I know I've got a weird batch and that might not be what I want from that batch. That batch may go to plink with a different rifle. Um, I actually am going to test this batch. I have a little bit left because I kind of want to see where it's so sooty. If there's any difference in the average group size, um, which I know what it should be because I've been using the same thing for five years in two different rifles. Uh, so I know basically what I should get. You know, I want to see if I get a good group size. I want to see if I get a group size um, out of that 30 rounds and how many flyers I have, how many I know should have been in that group but went off to one side, went off, you know, got off the map. Um, Definitely, I think the next video I'm going to do is going to be matching pairing ammo to your rifle. It's a basic thing you're going to need to know for shooting 22 rimfire. But that's the thing. Don't treat your rifle, your rimfire rifle like crap. We take them for granted. Uh, treat them the same way you would, like I said, your AR or your other rifles that you really have to, you know, <laughs> rely on for home defense. Uh, you know, maybe you won't run into the same kind of stupid problems I've done. Uh, Thank you very much. Have a good day.